Hey guys, Long here, back another math video. Um, it's me again this week. Uh, Daniel is visiting MIT, uh, the university he's going to go to. Um, I'm going to Carnegie Mellon for computer science. Um, and anyways, to this week we're doing an Amy question, uh, problem 14, 2012. And in my opinion, it's not as hard as uh, problem 14s on Amy's usually are. So try to solve it if you can. Pause the video if you need to. Um, excuse the chirping in the background, I got some pet chicks. Um, anyways, try to solve it if you can, I um, will go into the solution now. So it's it's a relatively uh, easy question to understand, it's just nine people in, uh, in a room. She stands with exactly two other people from the group. Um, but I think there is a really creative way to represent this problem that makes it much easier. And the way to represent this problem is to have each person be a point and for a handshake to be represented by an edge. So in a sense, we quickly notice that um, if we represent the question in this way, um, and if each person is represented as a point and each edge um, as a handshake, uh, it's actually a good way to represent the question because each point can only be connected to, um, connected, uh, to two other points and um, and if this point is connected to an edge to this point and shakes this person's hand, that means this person is also shaking this person's hand. So uh, it's a very good way to represent the question in that it fits all the requirements of a handshake. Um, so we're going to actually represent the people as points um, and vertices as handshakes. And what you notice is that if we actually do this, um, we actually can form a shape, a geometric shape. Um, and since each point has to have two vertices exactly, um, we sort of perform this this uh, this shape um, in which each point is on the uh, outside of the shape. Um, there's no lines in between because each point can only have two vertices coming out of it. So um, really, we can we can actually form rings of handshakes um, in this sense. And as you can see, this is a ring of five. Um, this is a ring of five people where this person shakes hands with these two people, these two, these person shakes hands with these two people, and so on. And it fits the requirement that each person shakes the hand of exactly two other people. Um, so um, representing handshaking, handshakes in terms of rings is very useful. Um, so now we have to ask ourselves, uh, how, do we, um, how many rings can we have with nine people? And there are four, and you have to remember, a ring has to have at least three people in it. This ring, like this. Um, this person shaking hands with these two, um, this person shaking hands with these two, etc. It can't be just a line because um, you can't shake hands with the same person uh, twice. You, you shake hands with exactly two of other people. Um, so uh, it has to be at least three people a ring. So um, how many ways can we make rings from uh, uh, nine people? And there are exactly four ways we can make rings. So first, the first way is having uh, three rings of three. Um, the second way is having um, one ring of six and one ring of three. So these are the cases. The third way is having uh, one ring of four and one ring of five. And the fourth way is having uh, one, one huge ring of nine. So let's actually see if we can calculate the number of ways uh, for each of these four cases. So how many ways can we actually make rings uh, using these nine people? So now we just have to find out the number of ways we can arrange nine people within these rings without any duplicates. Okay, case one. Um, first, we have to divide nine people into three groups. So choosing the first group would be 9 choose 3, right? Uh, choosing the second group out of 6 people is 6 choose 3. And choosing the last group out of 3 people is 3 choose 3. Um, but we have to understand these rings are indistinguishable. So say we choose, um, say we choose person A, B, C first um, for the first group. And then we choose D, E, F for the second group. And G H I for the third group. Well, it'd be the same as if we were choosing G H I for the first group, A B C for the second group, and D E F for the third group. So we have to keep track that we have to understand we're overcounting here. 
uh, by a factor of 3 factorial because there's 3 factorial ways to arrange these rings. Um, so that gives us a total of 280 ways to choose people for these rings. Now the second question is uh, how do we how many ways can we arrange the people within the rings? So how many ways can we arrange people A, B, C around this ring? And for a ring of three, it's exactly one. Why is it one? Because uh, rotations uh, don't matter. So A, B, C there is the same as A, B, C here. And reflections don't matter. Um, a, B, C is the same as A, C. Reflections don't matter. Because reflections and rotations, uh, in reflections and rotations, the same people will remain connected to the same people. So um, we don't want to count. We're, we don't want to count reflections and rotations. So for cycles of three, there's only one uh, one way to arrange them. And since all of these cycles have three, there's one way to arrange for each of them. So we don't have to take that into consideration. We only have to take into consideration the number of ways to split nine people into three groups. So that's 280. We do the same thing for case two. We choose nine, choose six, and three, choose three. Except uh, these rings are not indistinguishable. Uh, there's a ring of six and a ring of three. So we don't have to take into account that we can rearrange these two because these are clear, clearly distinguishable rings. So um, I did the math right, that's 84. And um, we know that the number, the ways to arrange three people in the three ring is just one. How many ways can we arrange it in the six ring? Well, let's think. There are six factorial ways to seat the people around. But rotations don't count. And there are six ways to rotate this table. You can rotate this table six times. And then uh, each combination in here also has its own reflection. Um, so you can flip it. Uh, you can f flip it in a direction. Um, and that will also not count. Um, and since each combination has uh, exactly one other reflection and six other rotations, we have to divide six factorial by six. And we have to divide by two for the reflections. Um, so what this gives us is 60. So now we multiply 84 by 60, and we get 5,040. Okay, and we just do the same thing for this one. Um, so it's 9 choose 4, 5 choose 5, um, and these are uh, distinguishable rings, so we don't have to worry about, um, you know, switching them around. And um, let's see, I think that's 126. How many ways can you arrange it in 4? That's 4 factorial divided by 4 rotations and uh, 2 reflections for every single uh, every single uh, arrangement. And that's equal to um, 3. And for the, hec uh, the, the pentagon, we do 5 factorial, 5 factorial times 2. That's equal to 12. 126 times 3 times 12. That's equal to 4,536. Final thing, we don't have to worry about choosing because we just use all nine people. So we go directly to the number of ways you can arrange nine people uh, within the ring. That's nine factorial divided by nine times two. Uh, and that, uh, oops, I made a mistake there. Don't mislead anyone. And that is equal to 2,160. All right, uh, that was good. We have every single possible combination. Now we just add them together. So 2,000, add that, add that, add that, add that. And you get blah, blah, blah. You get um, 30,016. Um, for Amy, they ask the remainder ones divided by 1,000. So the answer is 16. Hope you found this question interesting. I thought it was a really nice question in that you had to use a little bit of graph theory um, in, in, relation, in relation to combinatorics. So I um, hope you found it interesting. See you next week. And uh, we have to find the volume of this torus, uh, or finding an equation for the volume of the torus in uh, ter terms of uh, capital R and little r. And see if you can do it on your own. Uh, try to derive it using calculus.